But guys, the other big news out of the NFL, to attack of Iloa looks like he's going to return. Yeah. In in week 8, he is designated to return. He's going to have the opportunity if he clears the concussion protocol, which it looks like he's going to clear, he would be slated to start this Sunday for the Miami Dolphins. Now for a football sense, we understand how big it is, but everyone's talking about the lasting impact it can be for Tua. People are saying, Zach, he should hang it up. This is a situation. This is more to life. But guess what? Tua spoke on that today, specifically how he felt about coming back and how much he loves the game of football. So let's play that clip for you guys. It's going to continue. I appreciate your concern. I really do. Um, I love this game, and I love it to the death of me. That's it. So literally... You know, and people are saying Tua, and people have actually said this, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, they're afraid that they could see Tua die on the field. That's how yeah. people were so concerned over the situation. But look, it's his choice. He loves the game. He sat down. He's had conversations. And at the end of the day, this is Tua's decision. They're going through all the protocols. And he's not, there there have been other players that have been more concussed than Tua, but Tua's are the most documented on the national stage. Mm -hmm. On two of those cases, the Cincinnati Bengals game was a primetime game and the Thursday night game, primetime game, right? Very documented. So, but it looks like guys, Tua understands. He appreciates people's concern, but like you said, he, he loves the game of football. He wants to go out there. And now from a football standpoint, the Dolphins do need him. Need. But like, they, the only quarterback that seems to work for them right now, and that's what I'm saying schematically, I would think that they'd have a way to get the ball to Tyreek and Jalen, but they don't. But the guy that does know how to get it to him is Tua. And if they come back, this team's going to look very different, guys. And I mean, Zach, we yeah. talked about this before. That The skill position for the Dolphins, hands down, it's unbelievable. Hands down, it's unbelievable. They, now, the thing is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they're, they're scheduled down the, the, the rest of the way. Rock and, and Kevin, you can look at it. They got a lot of winnable games. A lot of winnable games. And it is a realistic possibility that if they beat those teams with losing records, Miami's going to find themselves in a good position to make the playoffs. Yeah, and like you said, okay, so yesterday, obviously, Johnu Smith, Fantastic day as a tight end, seven receptions for 96 yards. Uh, Alec Ingold, the fullback, one reception for 25 yards. Then you have Jalen Waddle with one reception for 11 yards. Tyreek Hill, one reception for eight yards. They combined for four targets. Uh, malpractice is the word I'll use because that's what it was. I understand you have a backup quarterback. I understand that Tyler Huntley is not too a tight by low when it comes to throwing the football. But like you said, Rip, you had two weeks to prepare for this football game in a way where you knew who your starting quarterback was. You knew that you needed to get the ball to Jalen Waddle and needed to get the ball to Tyreek Hill. The fact that each of them did not have, at a minimum, just a baseline, three screen targets each like the fact that they weren't even trying to get them the ball in creative ways it was actual routes that they were trying to run I get that they're trying to establish the run game I get that Johnny Smith had a fantastic game but if you ask the Colts hey Johnny Smith's going for 96 yards you're holding Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle to what 15 yards they're they're sitting there going we take that any damn day any day of the week you give us that they're going to win that game it, it was malpractice not to get those guys involved. And also, by the way, by the way, Anthony Richardson completed about 42% of his passes. Yeah. And the Colts won the game. Mm-hmm. So, guys, I mean, I mean, Rock, Kev, I mean, I don't know who wants to go first there. Should we start with the one that's on top? Rock? Yeah, Rock, yeah. Go, go, Rock. Rock likes to be on top. So, oh, okay. what? I like to be on top. Continue. Okay. Continue. Nice. He Very likes nice. to be on top of the conversation. But, Rock, I think I saw Joe make a comment here about guardian cap. The other part of this detail is Tua is not going to wear a guardian cap, the extra layer of protection. And, again, it's all his choice here, even though there are a lot of people here that are thinking that it's not the right choice for him it's, to come back and play. Listen, 
uh, unfortunately, I mean, a, a lot of people aren't the ones playing playing the game for two. It's uh, there's two is playing the game. He's the one going out there. He's the one that had these conversations. I'm sure he spoke with medical professionals, his family members, his wife, people that are important to him in his life. And you know what? Some of them might have said, "Hey, man." We don't think it's it's right for you to continue playing this game. We think you, you're going to injure yourself even more. They, they could have said that. But at the end of the day, this is Tua's decision. And it's it's only Tua's decision. You know, his head coach can say, hey, Tua, we're not going to play you. They're not going to do that. They're paying him too much money. Um, it, but if, if they truly value, because they talked about not being about, you know, Tua the football player, Tua the person. And, and if they, they truly value him as a person, and they feel like it is going to be a danger for himself and and his health to go out there and play football. They need to make that decision and say, hey, man, we're, we're not going to play you, regardless of how much money we're paying you. The NFL is a business. But if they got together and said, hey, we're going to put you out there, Tua goes, I'm good to go. I'm fine. And, and you know what? I'm willing to take the risk. It's it's the game. It's the game, man. And it's he wants to play the game. This is what he dedicated – He's dedicated his life to the game of football, and this is what he wants to do. You can't take that away from the guy. It's, it's. I mean, who, who are we to say that? I think with Tua, the, the injuries have looked super graphic, and there, there are guys that have probably had more concussions with Tua and tend to fly under the radar because they're not doing, what's it called, the fencing with the fingers. Basically, when his fingers like go into that state of, of it, it just yeah. doesn't look great at all. So... I would love to see Tua wear a guardian cap. Anything that can help him if he's going to go out there on the field, any precautions he can take if he's going to do this, I, I think would be really beneficial not only to his career but to his long-term health. Because first and foremost, man, you, you've seen guys deal with CTE. It's gut-wrenching. It's heartbreaking. And, and we know that the after effects that come with it. So I really hope this isn't the case for Tua going forward. And I hope after football, he continues to live a happy and healthy life. And there are no more concussions going forward for him. We're hoping and praying, man. Right, Kev? That's all you can hope for at the moment. But it is a, it is a business at the end of the day. And for the Miami Dolphins, look, the business, they need to start winning football games. They, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, this is a team. They weren't just like in that AFC East the bills were supposed to be on a downward spiral. They're not by the way, but the, the time is ticking for this offense. Tyree kills, not getting any younger. Jalen Waddle is a very talented player. HN is one of the better <laughs> talented threats out of the backfield. They're going to have to make some decisions, but at what cost, what's the cost going to be Kev? That's what we'll figure out here. Um, and the other part is they're going to have to figure out how to beat good teams. Kev, that's the other thing. The Dolphins don't have a lot of wins against teams with winning records over the last two plus seasons. Yeah. And again, yeah, so we've talked about that for the last couple of years where they're like the paper tiger, where they'll, they'll beat up on all of the, the bad teams and, you know, get all these flashy wins against under 500, tanking, whatever you want to call them, teams. And then, you know, we can use the Ravens as an example. If they go to Baltimore to play the Ravens and they get whooped. So, I mean, they do need to a back. Obviously, it's just, I think, a really scary situation where it's like every time he gets hit, it's it's going to be like a collective gasp and like holding the breath every time he goes down, especially when, you know, maybe his head will slam back. And there are just so many other factors. And Rocco, to your point about other people being kind of underrated in this thing, the only other player I can think of is Denzel Ward over in Cleveland, who I think has had five or six concussions and – you know, that that gets talked about, but obviously you mentioned it with like the fencing and, you know, him getting up and wobbling around and like the yep. clear telltale signs of like, OK, something's really wrong here. Like this needs to get the attention with all the emphasis the NFL is obviously placed mm -hmm. on, on player safety, concussions and, and all of the studies and whatnot. You know, I I wouldn't have been shocked if he hung it up and said, hey, man. It's just this is bigger than this for me, but it's something where he loves the game. And so, you know, that's his decision that he made. Obviously, if it gets to a certain point, you know, I would, you know, I'm sure doctors would try to step in. But at the end of the day, like he has the final call on that unless something goes seriously wrong. And obviously none of us hope it gets to that point. But it's just it's a scary thing because of 
all of the precedent that we've seen with with one particular player. And usually it's like there are a couple of different examples of like, okay, this this injury for one player is really bad. This injury for another player is really bad. Maybe this guy, a third one. It's all been with the same guy. You know, it's four or three different examples of textbook, man, this is really scary, all with the same guy. And so you think like, man, you just hope it all goes well and, you know, just kind of go from there. When, it, yeah. when you see trauma on the field, like this is the last thing I'll say, it, it garners more of a reaction. When you see someone's hands go like this and then fade down, your immediate reaction a lot of the times is, holy shit, I hope he's okay. Or I hope they're okay. I hope like I hope everything is okay because your mind starts swirling. You're like, you go, you go to the brain, you go to the spinal cord. You go to, okay, are they are they able to move their extremities? You think about all these things. And even back to some basketball players, when you see their injuries, and we think in our heads and we see them, and it's, it's traumatic for the viewer as well. You can't even imagine what the player is feeling out there. I go back to Kevin Ware when he snapped his leg in half during the NCAA tournament, or Paul George in USA Basketball. Same thing. When you see those on TV, it opens your eyes more. And the hope with this, it's you, you don't want to see Tua get injured anymore. But – the hope in seeing someone just react like that is that we can continue to bring more awareness and more eyes to concussions in football and what they do to the body and what they do to people. So again, wishing to and nothing but the best. Uh, nobody would have blamed him, Kevin, if he would have retired, if he would have hung it up today. People would have been like, all right, you know what? Great career, man. It's it's understandable. Take your money, ride off into the sunset, but you're looking out for you and your family. But he wants to play the game of football, and you can't take that away from him either. No, oh, yeah, and this is the last thing to close with that. You got one life. You got a choice of what you want to do. Tua loves playing ball. Tua wants to be out there with his team, understands the circumstances. Now you got to see where the chips fall where they may. Hopefully that's unscathed moving forward. And for Dolphins fans, hopefully that's getting some dubs in the process. New to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. Brian Ripken Show, we do it live Monday and Thursday.